First of all, if you're already familiar with Windows Virtual Desktop, then this is not the video for you because Azure Virtual Desktop is just a new name for Windows Virtual Desktop. But if you don't know anything about either of these services, then this is the video for you. If you want to know what Azure Virtual Desktop or AVD is, then you might get a clue from Microsoft's vision for the service, and that is to become a flexible VDI solution for nearly any use case accessible from virtually anywhere. From that, you can probably guess that AVD is a VDI solution. And it is, if you want to put it in simple terms, it takes the true and tested remote desktop technology that Windows servers have had for decades, and it supplies it as a service through Azure. But that's a major simplification, so uh, let's get in a little more detail, shall we? Now, I don't want to go into too much history here, because then this video would be a couple of hours long. But I will say that AVD is built on technology that Microsoft made available in Windows NT Server 4.0 Terminal Server Edition, which came out in way back in 1988. And this technology has been improved upon and refined throughout the years. And the way AVD uh, supplies its services now looks more like how remote desktop services uh, looked after the launch of Windows Server 2008 R2. So to understand what AVD is and how it works, we need to understand the technology behind it, namely the remote desktop services. If you're really only interested in what AVD can do for you and not the technicalities behind it, feel free to use the chapter markers down below and just skip to the next section. Remote desktop services provide virtual desktops or remote apps streamed over a network. That means that all processing happens on a server and the device that you're accessing it from only receives screen images from that server. There's some nuances here, but that's the basic idea of how, how remote desktop services work. With virtual desktops, you enter a new session and have your completely own virtual desktop in that session. But with remote app, you have an app that's just streamed directly to your device and it kind of looks like it's running locally. And both of these can be uh, delivered across a local network or via the internet. But for all this to work, we would of course need some servers. And with remote desktop services, we need servers to fill five distinct roles. You have the remote desktop session host, you have the remote desktop gateway, remote desktop connection broker, uh, remote desktop web access, and you have the remote desktop licensing. Now, session hosts are the workhorse of this setup. The, this is where all the sessions are running. This is where all the processing happens. The gateway is, as the name implies, uh, the gateway that your users are connecting to and mainly used if your users are connecting via the internet. And then you have the connection broker, which is, um, well, connection broker. It uh, defines when you're connecting, should you be delegated to this session host or that session host based on either load or uh, where you connected from last. The web access is simply a web server that provides uh, this service on a web site. And then you have the licensing server because what fun would it be without licensing? Now the licensing role just uh, makes sure to uh, assign uh, client access licenses for any users that are connecting to your solution. In addition to this, you would need Active Directory domain controllers and you would need a SQL server to host the database for the solution. A few of these roles can of course be hosted on the same service like the gateway and the web access role. And you can also host the licensing role on your uh, Active Directory domain controllers. But even so, a simple remote desktop services uh, solution would often require at least five services as a minimum to just barely function. And since you're managing this service yourself, you'll also be uh, responsible for considering the scaling and availability of all the service involved. With AVD on the other hand, most of these roles are supplied to you as a service. You get the connection broker role, the gateway role, the web access role, and the licensing role supplied to you as a service, always scaled right, always available, and deployed across multiple sites across the globe. What you need to provide is uh, the session host role and some form of traditional Active Directory synchronized with Azure AD. That means that your setup can look something like this. 
In this case, I've used the Azure AD domain services as a way to provide the traditional Active Directory, but you could also achieve this by having a virtual machine running as a domain controller, or you can use your existing on-prem domain controllers, as long as these are uh, synchronized with Azure AD using Azure AD Connect. A quick little sign note here regarding the requirement for a traditional Active Directory. As I mentioned in a previous video, Microsoft has already announced that joining your AVD session host directly to Azure AD is a feature that will be coming in a preview soon. And uh, as of now, that feature is in public preview, but it's only for validation environments. But that makes hope that soon the requirement for a traditional Active Directory for your AVD environments will be gone. Uh, yeah. So back to the video. So that's a sneak peek at what's behind AVD. Now let's see what it can do for you. With AVD, you have two basic choices in how you would like to provide your users with the service. And that is uh, either having remote app stream apps seamlessly to your end users devices, or you can provide your users with a full-fledged virtual desktop. The remote app option is great for every use case where you want your users to be able to utilize everything on their local device as well as everything in your AVD environment. And as the virtual desktop option is great for every use case where you want your users to be only be working within your AVD environment. Uh, for example, if you want to provide them with a locked down environment. Regardless of whether or not you use a remote app or virtual desktop, um, AVD can deliver to most of the devices out there. You have clients for Mac, iOS, Android, and actually two different Windows clients. And in addition to that, there's also a web client, uh, which works on any HTML5 compliant browser. There's also a couple of partners out there that provide thin clients that can be used to connect to uh, AVD, such as HP devices running their Thin Pro OS or Dell devices running their Thin OS. Or since you, all you really need is an HTML5 browser, you can use this uh, cute little Raspberry Pi to connect to AVD. And since there's such a, a variety of clients, you can also use AVD to kind of make Windows run on devices that are not meant to be run on Windows, uh, like this Raspberry Pi, or things like an iPad. Uh, you can have your Windows 10 or Windows 7 desktop on such a device. And speaking of Windows, traditionally remote desktop services and its likes have been forced to run on Windows server operating systems if you want to have a multi-user environment. That means that if you want to have multiple users on the same session host, then that session host would have to be running a Windows server operating system. And well, server operating systems, they are um, well meant to be run on servers, so there's no, not always that user friendly. But with AVD, you have the only supported way of running Windows 10 multi-session. That means that you can stack multiple users on one virtual machine and still provide them with an end user operating system. And let's use that talk about multi-session as a segue over to scaling. Because as I mentioned before, with AVD, you get most of the roles from a remote desktop services environment provided to you by Microsoft as a service. You get the gateway, the connection broker, the web access, the licensing, all provided you as a service for free by Microsoft. And these roles are uh, managed by Microsoft and they are always scaled, always available. That means that it doesn't matter if you have five users or 5,000 users in your AVD environment. Those roles will always be scaled to your needs. The thing that you do need to scale yourself is the session host role. This is always going to be based on virtual machines in your Azure environment. So scaling them is just a simple manner of having enough virtual machines to match the load on your AVD environment. You do not have to worry about load balancing the session hosts, but you do need to make a choice on how you want to distribute your users. More on that in a bit. In AVD, your session hosts are divided into host pools, and these host pools can be set up in two main ways. You have personal and you have pooled. Now, the names might be pretty self-explanatory, but let's look at the two different types. Personal host pools are, well, you might have guessed it, there are host pools where session host VMs are personal, they are not shared with anyone, and your users will connect to their own session host each and every time. Meaning that they will get the performance they expect, because no one else will be hogging all the CPU, for example. For personal host pools, you have two types of assignments. You have automatic assignment and you have direct assignment. Automatic assignment means that AVD will uh, pick a session host VM at random if a user connecting does not have a session host assigned to them already. But with direct assignment, you can specify the session host VM for each and every user. Meaning that you can prep a session host VM especially for one user and have 
that one user actually get that session host VM and not some other random session host VM. With pooled host pools, you also have a choice to make. You need to decide whether or not you want depth first or breadth first. With depth first, the load balancer in AVD will try to fill up one session host before sending users to a new one. This is based on a session limit that is specified on the host pool and not on the session host load itself. Uh, this makes a good choice for scenarios where you don't want to have any more session hosts running than necessary. You know, cut down costs. With breath first, AVD will try to distribute your users evenly across all session hosts in the host pool if they are available. Meaning that if your session hosts are powered off, they will not be used. So you can have three session hosts that are available and will be evenly distributed users across. And then you have a couple of powered off VMs that can be, you know, in backup or cold standby for if the user load suddenly increases. So now that we've covered uh, the tech behind AVD and what it can provide, clients, scaling, load balancing and so on, you should have a basic idea of what AVD is. And now I forgot to mention, um, Windows 7, if you're still depending on it, AVD gives you uh, an option to continue to run Windows 7 on your session host and you will get the extended security updates for free. Uh, so that's great, I guess. Uh, if you learned something from this video, uh, please feel free to hit that like button or even subscribe. And um, other than that, I'll uh, see ya.